Good morning, Mr. President. Great job. Wow. Welcome. Mike Graham. Wow, the sucker punch DJ. Great hat. Very Thank you. Good. Thank you. Listen, welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. You have your own republic, of course, over the United States of America. I cannot tell you how excited I am, uh, Mr. President, to have you on. Tell us where you are. Tell us what you're doing uh, and tell us what you're going to do for the rest of the day. Well, I've been very much cloned. You know, I'm up here in Scotland. You see, if you see me floating around in the States, don't believe it. it's fake news. Really? It's very bad. I'm in a secret little hideout bunker in my golf course. I'm the intercourse champion, as you know. I'm very good. <laughs> I've heard that. You know? Yeah. So you up at Trump Turnbury, by any chance? I was there at Turnbury. Christmas. Turn right, it, and you're there, Turnbury. Lots of cameras. So if you do 51 miles an hour, you're going to get zapped. <laughs> so we're very much about disciplining you before you go out on the ninth and get a hole in one and a bruise in the other. Absolutely right. Now, listen, I think we can now see you in all your glory uh, uh, where you are up in uh, Trump Turnbury. Let's have a look and, uh, and see what the surroundings are. Uh, very, very wow. good to see you. I see you've got a nice hat this. on as well. You see, I still got it. Yours is more current, you see, but we still want to make America great again, <laughs> don't we? We really do. I can now reveal exclusively to the world that, of course, you are Lewis McLeod, the famous impressionist, the man of many voices, the man of a million voices, in fact. Um, I, I guess uh, we could carry on as Trump or carry on as Lewis McLeod. Well, I was just going to say, I'll just take this hat off, actually, because there you go. <laughs> I need these on because I can't hear you otherwise. It's hard, to wear, it's, great... it's hard to put the hat on without the old, uh, without the headphones, really, isn't it? I know. I should have really got a wig as well. But <laughs> the, the wig I use for Trump is, is on loan from a brilliant wig maker called Alex Rouse. Right. And this wig is thousands of pounds. It's like a, you know, you, you, I've got to rent it. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like so expensive. But it's amazing, and it's made to my head, and they, they, they tweak it and add bits and take bits away and move it. They've got the flappy bit of the side when right. he goes up the stairs in the, tra in the plane. Yes. Now, of course, I mean, in the midst of all of this, we've got six weeks to go until the uh, till the election in America, so you're yeah. going to be a pretty busy guy, I would imagine. In addition, uh, you're part of Spitting Image. I know it's a bit secret at the moment, so we're not going to go into exactly what you're doing, but the new Spitting yeah. Image features you, Lewis McLeod. That's right, yeah. Well, you see, I, I was so chuffed... Um, I don't know if it's been a kind of conflation of working on Radio 4. Uh, Matt Strong, the producer, has brought a fantastic uh, team of writers over. And um, I've worked with Steve Connolly in the past, who's brilliant. He's a brilliant director, Steve. Worked with him on uh, Rory Bremner and Bremner Bird and Fortune. Yes. So over the years, because I'd sort of been just that bit too late to get my audition reel into Giles Pilbro when it was the last series of Spitting Image. So I was kind of gutted that I didn't get it. And that was back in like 1995. Right. So I was really chuffed to get the chance to to even audition for it. So I'm I'm really I'm over the I'm overjoyed. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I dare say you will be doing quite a bit of uh, of Donald Trump. Can you do Biden? Because Biden's tougher. I've been listening to Biden. I, this, that, well, you know the the, the thing about I, I just what what day is it? Where am I going with this? You know I, I you know listen. It's not that complicated. It's just he's got. I, there's a lot of there's a lot of voices that have preamble like Boris has got the prime yeah. minister. I get what you want. You know, there's always a bit the thinking noises that they do. Well, Biden's got a bit of that going on as well. You and know, he never I, knows I, where the great thing about Biden is he never knows where he is, right? No. What, 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 is where are you, Joe? I, well, I'm somewhere. It's somewhere. Five PM somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a kind of, you know, very, very much sort of, a, they, they, they sort of, they become their own kind of caricature the, the more you do them. I mean, I used to do Trump and I, I, I used to sound a bit weirdly like Alec Baldwin in the film Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Yes. You know, yeah. Well, you, know, you know, that, I remember you, of... you did a great, uh, you did a great thing around Parliament Square once, I seem to remember, um, yeah. where, where, where you, you actually looked a bit like Alec Baldwin as well. Aye, it didn't really sound like Trump, but the reaction. <laughs> it's just one of these characters. You put the wig on and everything. You put the, you got the suit and the badge and everything. And, you know, and it's so I, I sort of uh, matured into the voice a wee bit, you know. Yes. It did, I, I listened to early Dead Ringers that I was on and the, it, it doesn't sound like him, really. Right. But it's also, he almost, more than but he almost now does an impersonation of himself, doesn't he? Because when he does that whole kind of, you know, it's fake news. Yeah. And he just fake lets news. it kind of... Well, that's right. This That sort of messianic yeah. thing. The wobble. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, but the sincere guy, you know, the very serious guy is the one I sort of latched onto. Because when you do the shouty one, it's it's kind of high. He's got quite a, a, a sort of range of voice. Trump, he's, he, he kind of goes right the way up. But he's, but the sort of guy down here, I find easier for me. And it's sort of what he does a lot, you know. Yeah. 
It's He's brilliant. Working on it, and I mean, watching Boris yesterday, Prime Minister's questions, he did a lot of umming and eyeing and mmm, and uh, he wasn't quite sure how to deal with Angela Rayner, which I thought I thought it'd be more dangerous for him in a way than Keir Starmer. I mean, I don't even, I'm not even sure if he could ever do Sir Keir Starmer because he's so boring. Uh, I'll tell you what, Duncan Wisby does a brilliant Keir. And uh, he's, uh, it's when you see, because my colleagues that were pals and me, when you see somebody, one of your mates doing it, you think, I'll just no bother with that one, you know? It's right. like, uh, Cameron, you know, he was he was tough for all of us. I yes. know, I know that Can you do Cameron? Give us a bit of Cameron. No, no, really. I, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I sound like, but it's, uh, it's just it's quite generic. But he's a really tough one. I think, uh, again, Duncan's got a belter, and so is Rory. Bremner's got a belter of a uh, Cameron voice. It's, yeah. it's really like him. But right. I, I've sort of, I mean, I, I, a few of the, 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 the ministers, I, I mean, I, I have a go at um, you know, Rishi Sunak mm. and that sort of deeply earnest sort of and slight <laughs> lisp. But I, I, I mean, I've always been kind of interested in the, in the in the sort of correspondence around about them for some reason. I sort of I've sort of found myself landing on that more. You know, Andrew Neil, people like that. Yes. Know. What about uh, Ian Blackford? Can you do him? He seems to be the thorn in the side of uh, of almost everybody. <laughs> Well, again, on ringers, you're asking me to do other words I don't do. Well, no, <laughs> he's he's the guy. Uh, Blackford's again, Duncan. You should have we should have got Duncan on this one. <laughs> but Blackford, no, I know. It's, I don't actually do that many politicians, bizarrely. I mean, I, I've got uh, there's Alex Salmon that I used to do quite a lot. Oh, that's uh, great. And uh, and uh, both, you know, both both parties. Right. And uh, see you down at Musselboro. Uh, muscle butter, that's it. Uh, uh, hippies and all that uh, troublemaking, <laughs> you know, all that football shenanigans. Yes, but I, so I, I, I'm just kidding. I, I have hand, but I, I found out that I could do Mark Kermode just recently. Oh, I was yes. just, you know, tinkering and I thought, oh, that's not bad. And uh, we ended up getting him on the program. Uh, but aye, it's it's all your competitors that I do. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. That's okay. Well, I mean, you can do me if you want, but you maybe have not have enough, have enough time to study me. But but I, I'm told by your brother Donald, you can do him. Aye, that's right, Donald. Aye, well, he's he's in there, isn't he? Aye, Donald, say. Aye, we the thing about it is, and he's got genuine reason to be raging. I mean, it's well, he hasn't made any money for happening. about six months, has he? And with his aye, lifestyle, well, I don't know how he's getting by. To be honest. It's aye, it's been pretty pretty hairy up here in Scotland, certainly around the license trade and right. what's going to happen next. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Do you do any royals at all? Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up there. Do you do any royals? Oh yes, Andrew. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, I don't party. I I haven't partied. I don't really know what partying is. I mean, I can part my hair, but I really I I don't. Do you uh, do you sweat, uh, your royal highness? I, I don't sweat. Uh, it, it's sweat, sweaty Betty. I know all of these <laughs> phrases, but really they don't apply to me. Hang on, I'm absolutely ringing. Somebody's, <laughs> somebody's poured Evian in my armpit. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a great uh, thing, talent to have, Lewis, but have you found it in any way kind of um, uh, changing or di more difficult now in these, in these very woke times where you're not really supposed to make fun of anyone unless you do it I, in a particular you, you've way? You've got to constantly, well, exactly, Mike, you've got to really watch what you're saying. It's very, uh, but then uh, if, I mean, Trump's the, the hardest one, you know, mm. because even when you're satirizing Trump, uh, you could sort of find yourself in that Trump ballpark. And actually, you've got to be careful because, uh, you know, it, it, it causes, he's so divisive. And, yes. You know, so I mean, actually, we just posted up a thing on Twitter yesterday where I put, um, I made him ash from Alien. You know, where I put so the, the, there's a scene where his heads on the table, <laughs> and you know, I've just turned him into Trump. And you've got Sigourney <laughs> Weaver going, "What was your secret order nine three seven? You read it, you voted. I thought it was clear." <laughs> so, but, so you put Trump in weird situations. Yes, it's, it's not that's, bad. I that's mean, very funny. You know, and so I was thinking, well, what else could you put him in? And it's just like you get you get constant running gags with him, which is great. Right. Boris, ah, well, obviously, I mean, how dare, uh, you know, uh, Cameron criticise me you know, for, for missing five Cobras. I was there on time every day at London Zoo. Uh, you know, he he's, I, I, I make him a, a cartoon just right. because he's got, he does those things. He's got that, but well, he's easier in a way because. Uh, because he the, kind of does of, it for himself, doesn't he? Like you said. Exactly. Aye, he does. You know, they're, they're, that's the thing. They're, they're they're a gift. Some of them, but they're of late they've been quite hard to to kind of 
cherry pick the best ones. Well, it's like when people are actually. So dull, aren't they? Well, well, it's when people also when they say sat satire is actually genuinely dead because you couldn't mm. actually make up what's really going on. The real world oh. is actually more bizarre than anything you could create, you know, around oh. it. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> I've been enjoying watching the news. Obviously, um, the, the the late night news night. Kirsty Walk makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah. Kirsty Walk. You see what doing, Kirsty Walk. If you've noticed with Kirsty Walk, and then it's, she she sort of transcends language now. She sort of speaks in her own sort of dicta and dictum. <laughs> she sort of mumbles, and then she grabs her glasses, and that's when you get clarity. Yeah, she's a great character for anybody that's doing voices. I think Kirsty Walk. It's probably right. and she's never to be Col you're never to be challenged, Kirsty. You can never be challenged. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. I've got in mind just mumble here and just sort of look at that and sort of doing something quite robust. But actually, it's only when I put the glasses on. It's like it's like uh, Kenny Everett's ass when it, in that Rod Stewart sketch. She get, she get bigger and bigger every time she, she lunges for the glasses. Tom Bradby's another one on ITV. Yeah. They're, all, they're all quite eccentric. On, on, well, they are. What about Peston? I mean, Pest, Peston's oh. a good one, isn't he? Can you do Peston? He's got a pause. He's getting longer. And and, and you know, when it comes back to Bradby, it's like he shouldn't be doing the news. It's like he's got, he's got that face. It's like, I can't, can't believe this. And he always thinks, he'll do things like this. He'll go, right, look, now, okay. <laughs> And he'll do this. He'll go, well, Peugeot. He hasn't, done any, he hasn't done any sleep for about three months, has he? Oh, he's going to suffer from insomnia, I think. That's it. He's got that sort of, what, what, what is going on? Even at the end of the news, when we, we, was it, we used to call it the happy donkey story. Yeah. You get the fluffy story at the end. Right. <laughs> that does not make him laugh. Right. He's almost, he did it the other night there, and it was almost like he wanted to curl up his script and fling it in the bin, right. shaking his head and miming what? You know what's going on here, you know? Exactly right. What about the football and, and the sort of sporty aspects of life? Do you do any of them? Uh, I used to. I mean, I, well, I mean, I've, I've talked sport. I mean, I've been I've been doing lots of VOs uh, over the years. Yes. Talk and uh, selling the shows, putting the, putting out there. McCoy was one of the ones I definitely, you know, definitely, definitely so superb. You know, we always used to sort of start by saying definitely so, definitely yeah. so superb. Ali, yeah. Ali, have you heard this story before? Ali, uh, yeah, every time I, I, he hears I, the I, same story, he laughs the same way. Superb, absolutely. And you're know, obviously, you know, you've got uh, like Man United, well, great, absolutely. So, Alex, wow, <laughs> right then. And uh, I, there was a few of them prying loud, although there was a few correspondents. We had a guy up there, Jerry McNee in Scotland, we used to have, right. they used to say, Jerry McNee, the voice of a football. Yes. <laughs> what about Jim? You can do Jim White, probably, because he does, uh, he used to do SCB. Jim White, well, that's that is really something. Let's go to the phone line. That's super duper. <laughs> Marvelous. That's a great. No. <laughs> Sensational. Sensational. I mean, really? That 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 really that's that's something else, isn't it? You're now I we're mean, now actually simulcasting because Jim White's actually in the studio behind me, right? Broadcasting as Jim White. You're now broadcasting <laughs> as Jim White as well. It'd be great. Well, maybe what, let's see if we can lip sync Jim White. Jim White, super <laughs> duper. <laughs> You'll love that. It's brilliant stuff. Listen, when is spitting image on? When's the first one going um, out? From from what I'm told, it's October, early October. I think it might be the third of October, maybe. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I was, it's was really exciting, and it's a brilliant team of people. They've got Jess Robinson, Deborah Stevenson, Luke Kempner, Matt Ford, Billy West, big legend from America. Apparently, is um, doing some stuff. I, I mean, it's just a, a really brilliant team of people, and the production behind it's massive. You Avalon doing great things. So fingers crossed, it's going to be. A, a success for a fantastic well listen i wish laugh. you I, I wish you luck i'm sure you won't need it i've put as you can see i've put the hat on so can you give us president mr president can you give us a farewell message and a good luck message please i want to say this to the people of the world as one hockey stick said to the other let's get the puck out of here <laughs> President Donald Trump uh, in the guise of Lewis McLeod, a great man, a fantastic uh, impressionist. Thank you very much indeed.